Tyler for Help My Landscaping and we're here to talk about sprinkler valves. So we'll show you some common valves, uh, what manifolds look like, different types, and uh, maybe we can get into some easy repairs. So here's what uh, one style of sprinkler box looks like. Inside you'll find uh, spider webs, which are disgusting, but they uh, are good for the environment, so we'll keep them. But this is a PVC manifold. It's been glued, um, and then you have the valves going off that direction and these coming off here. We have six valves in this valve box. And looking closer, you can see that this particular one is a hunter valve. This is the body right here, a bleeder valve. You got a pressure regulator and then the solenoid right here. Now this is what turns the valve on from the clock. So the clock sends a signal to this uh, and it turns the valve on here. And we'll get more into that later. But this is a basic layout, one style of manifold that uses PVC in the valve box. So here is another valve box with a different type of manifold that connects the valves together to the main line. This is a swivel manifold. You can see that these are a little bit different than the PVC ones. So this right here actually spins and there is a rubber gasket inside that seals it to the valve. So these are a lot easier to get on and off and to do repairs on. You can also see there's a couple of different valves here. This valve is a Rainbird DV100. It's a very common one inch valve. You can see the solenoid up here at the top. The wires go into it. The bleeder valve right here. But this one is a little bit different because it has a filter right here and underneath this dirt is a regulator, a pressure regulator. This valve is used for drip systems. So this is what one of those swivel manifolds look like. This is just a single T. It has a male thread on this side and then a female swivel on this side. You can see that this swivels without the T moving. Inside you have an O-ring which seals the valve to the manifold or the next section of manifold. And here you have another O-ring, nice thick O-ring. It allows for a little bit of flex as opposed to PVC and it's a lot easier to repair the valves in the valve box. So here's another setup. If you look underneath these valves, you can see the PVC is connected from the bottom as opposed to the side. These are angle valves with the connection underneath the valve. These valves are called anti-siphon valves and have a backflow preventer attached. Here is another example of a manifold with different valves in it. And this one has a copper manifold with several different types of valves. This valve box is a PVC manifold, but it has weathermatic valves. These are slightly different. These also have the solenoid. You can see the wires going in there and a pressure regulator here, but there's no bleeder valve. This switch right here turns the valve on or off manually. So I'll turn it on right now. Now this valve is on manually, you can hear it. And if I want to turn it off, now it's off. Now valves are in the closed position until the clock tells it to turn on. Or you turn it on manually by flipping this switch or if this is a different type of valve, you could turn it on with the solenoid or with the bleeder valve. So there are also round valve boxes like this one instead of the rectangle ones. Inside you may have one, sometimes two valves inside. This one you can just lift up like that. So let's take a look at a few different types of valves in different brands. So here we have the Rainbird DV100. We saw that earlier. This is a female by female, and it's a one inch. Here is the Hunter. This is a PGV. This is also a one inch, but this one is a male by barb. So this one threads right into a manifold, 
and goes straight into the poly pipe. This one you need to get adapters for. Here is a Weathermatic, affectionately called the Silver Bullet. This one has the solenoid at the top. This one has the switch here to manually turn it on and off, but there's no bleeder valve on this one. These are great valves, but also a female by female. This one is an Eritrol. This is the angle valve that comes in from the bottom and then goes out at an angle to the lateral line. You can see the arrow there. So make sure you're installing it the right way. This one does have a bleeder valve and the solenoid. So here is the Hunter nail by Barb, the one inch. The solenoid says quarter turn on and off. So when you're trying to turn on manually, quarter turn, maybe a half turn, that's all you need and hand tight. You don't want to crank it down too much. It can damage it. With the bleeder valve, same thing. You can turn it on. It has a slot for a flathead screwdriver, but I find that using your fingers is usually the best, and you turn it on and turn it off this way. Now, with the Eritrol here, this one is a little bit different. You can use a Phillips or your fingers to turn this on and off here with the bleeder valve, but you can also see it has an on-off here, so this one twists around. Now, this one you can twist around a quarter, or a half, but it actually kind of has a little bit of a stop with it. So you can also see here on the Rainbird valve here, this is an HV, it has screws here, and this allows you to take the top off of the valve. So you can use a Phillips, a flathead, or a 5 16 nut driver that takes these off. Now this one, there's no screws. This is known as a jar top. Eritrol makes them Hunter makes them, a few others, but this is a jar top because the whole thing twists off the top like a jar. Then you can see the spring inside and the diaphragm. And this one, you can take this diaphragm out and see inside all the way to the bottom. Now when taking these apart, make sure you put them back the way you found them and all the pieces go back in where they're supposed to line up. So this one has the spring, which tends to fall out. So you wanna make sure it gets lined up correctly. And then you can put the top back on and screw it back on. It's easy to do when it's not in the valve box, but you can do it in the valve box, uh, sometimes by hand, or sometimes you have to use a pair of channel locks to take it off. And sometimes you have to take the solenoid off itself so that you can get to the jar top. These just unscrew as well, all the way. So let's say you have a valve that's sticking on or sometimes they stick off so you there's not getting any water or if it's sticking on, it's constantly running. So the most common thing is there's something that gets stuck inside here. So the best thing to do is to remove the top. So I'm just using a 5 16 nut driver here to take the screws out. Okay, so now these are all loose. Sometimes they'll pull out and you have to be careful not to lose them. Sometimes they don't. These are designed not to fall out. So then you can take the top off. You can see the diaphragm in here. Now notice as you take it off, there's a little section right here that where the solenoid lines up. So you take this out and if you've got something stuck inside, you'll see it usually down here in the middle. Sometimes it can be a rock. It can be a piece of plastic. I've heard of crazy things like matchbox cars getting stuck inside or even rodents, bugs can get inside. So what you do is when this is off, then you turn the system on, flush it out. It pushes all the debris out and then turn the system back off again and put everything back the way that you found it. Okay, so now these are back on hand tight. You don't want to over tighten them, but they are nice and snug. 
So then you go back, turn the water on, and that should take care of the problem. Well, that's the basic introduction to valves and manifolds. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, let me know. If you have questions, uh, make a note in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to help you out. I hope you enjoyed it and let's get back to work.